Hey guys, and welcome back to Vlogs and Frogs. My name is Ryan Peterson, for those of you who don't know, and this right here is Silly Billy the Millie. He is a millipede. Now, the North American millipede is what we're gonna call him. There are many subspecies of the North American millipede, but this is what this guy is commonly known as, as well as the American giant millipede, because look at the size of this guy. Now, although he's only about four or five inches long, that is huge for millipedes. And look at that cutie, an absolutely gorgeous species. So let's talk about him and learn some things. Ah! Now, although the common name millipede implies that these animals have 1,000 legs, because milli in Latin means thousand and petty is feet, most millipedes have fewer than 50 pairs. North American millipedes have two pairs of legs attached to each body segment, except for a few segments at the front and back ends that only have one pair. Their bodies are long and cylindrical, with many segments that are covered by a cuticle consisting of three layers. They can reach up to 2.5 grams in weight, and they average about 4 inches in length. And for millipedes, that's giant. Individuals are mainly black, though the edges of their body segments show a range of colors, including yellow, purple, red, and pink, and even other ones. They also express some sexual dimorphism. This means that males and females express different traits that you can see physically. Typically, males of this species have longer legs and antennae than females do. Both sexes' average lifespan is estimated to be anywhere between 1 and 11 years. They sense their environment using their antennae, which can taste food, smell odors, feel, measure temperature, find water, and sense pheromones. Those are some complex special organs. They have special organs found at the base of the antennae that measure humidity as well. They also have eyes on either side of the head which detect light and movement. Potential mates communicate with each other using pheromones and silk trails. How romantic, right? These cuties can be found all over the eastern United States, and some have been found in parts of Canada, like Quebec and Ontario provinces. They are terrestrial animals that are often found in forests and agricultural areas, hiding in the soil litter, under rocks, boards, and dead trees. They also really love piles of leaves. The more dead and the wetter, the better. You can also sometimes find them in dead animal carcasses. It may seem gross to you, but that's like the Marriott for them. Basically, they love to burrow. They will burrow deep into the soil where their many legs help thrust them into the ground. They love the dark and moist places to hide out in. This helps them feel safe, like a hug from Mother Nature. Their bodies aren't fully sealed, so this means they can easily suffer water loss. So to compensate, they're restricted to habitats where humidity is higher. Thus, the wetter the better. These millipedes are solitary and nocturnal, although you can find them out and about during the day sometimes if they decided to take a midday stroll. They do hibernate in the colder winter months. When they molt, they initiate this process in moist places to reabsorb water in their cuticles to prevent too much of that water loss, which will result in dehydration and then, sadly, death. Anyways, on to a happier note, these guys are very capable of movement. Each pair of their legs move in a wave-like motion, which looks so cool. They can walk forwards, backwards, and even side to side. When attacked by their long list of predators, including, but not limited to, Birds, dogs, toads, possums, raccoons, lizards, scorpions, turtles, and skunks. They'll curl up and trust their exoskeleton for protection, as well as emit a foul-smelling and tasting odor in hopes of deterring them away. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Millipedes are detrivores and prefer decaying leaves, wood, and roots, especially if the decaying matter has bacteria and fungi, which offers extra nutrients. They sometimes eat live vegetation, but rarely animal tissue. Most will actually eat their own feces, which allows them to digest nutrients that weren't digested the first time. They use their mandibles to bite and crush food into small, tiny, tasty pieces. And on that note, it's time for me to go find some tiny, tasty snacks to nibble on the tiny little pieces. So, thanks for tuning in, and we love you guys. So, let's say bye to Silly Billy the Millie.